Welcome to another episode of Myeloma Crowd TV. I'm your host, Jenny Alstrom, a myeloma patient just like you. Today our show is about clinical trials. What are they and why should we think about joining? You know those new drugs that were approved last year in multiple myeloma, like teratumumab, elotuzumab, exazomib, and carfilzomib? We have those drugs in the clinic today because patients like you participated in clinical trials. Today's treatments are yesterday's clinical trials. Did you know that in adult cancers, only three to 5% of patients join clinical trials? Sometimes studies can stay open for years or never accrue, just trying to find patients to join. Contrast that with childhood blood cancers where almost 85% of children join. Why? There are a few centers that do research, so they're highly collaborative, and parents are highly motivated to move their children into the studies and are willing to travel. There have been some cures developed in childhood leukemias in particular because of this high participation rate. If we want to accelerate a cure for our multiple myeloma, this is something we can do and join to help the talented researchers get their work done faster. Just imagine what we could do if even 10 or 20% of us participated. This is why I started Myeloma Crowd Radio, an online radio show that interviews top myeloma researchers to better understand their open clinical trials. I ask them about their research and they explain it as best they can in language that we as patients can understand. So far we've done over 80 shows with over a million listeners and readers and I encourage you to listen or read these fascinating shows to hear from the doctors directly about their exciting work. Now recently we caught up with myeloma specialists and patients at Pat's Myeloma Survival School in Florida to hear their thoughts about clinical trials. Dr. Brian Van Ness joins us to explain why trials are held. Obviously the purpose of a clinical trial is to establish how well a drug might work on patients and in many clinical trials you're comparing a new drug potentially to a standard of care and the idea is to identify what are the best treatments and to improve those treatments and it really is a research enterprise to identify which patients might respond better to the new drug. One of the reasons I would encourage patients to get involved in clinical trials is first of all they're being developed by some of the brightest minds in the country so you certainly have some of the best opportunities to get some of the best therapies from these bright people. The second thing is, is that oftentimes research studies are associated with these clinical trials, so we gain an additional phenomenal amount of information about the patient's disease, we better understand the biology of that disease, we better understand the response. So every time a patient goes on a clinical trial, there is this amplification of information that occurs, not only just simply comparing whether one drug works better than another drug, but all the information you get out of that in terms of um, biology of the disease, biology of a response, the genetics of that individual, the biology of that individual, and how that will relate to other patients as they're being treated with new therapies. So I think new therapeutic opportunities are rapidly expanding our capabilities. One only has to look at what's happened in the last year. We've had like four new drugs that have been approved for myeloma. I was at a recent meeting um, called the Hematologic Summit where other malignancies were being discussed. They were all envious of the fact that myeloma has all of these new therapies and some of the leukemias are sitting there with standard cares that, that have been in existence for the last 10 or 15 years with modest effects. We're finding new therapies and the exciting part of these new therapies as we learn from clinical trials, they're making treatments better and better and better. So we're, we're talking about long-term survivorship because a lot of these new therapies have been developed through these clinical trials. While these studies are looking at safety and how effective the drug is, there are also insights like Dr. Van Ness mentions about how to better treat myeloma patients as individuals. As a researcher that's involved in genetics, one of the things that I'm most interested in is trying to identify which therapy will work best for an individual patient. Just in the last day or two, I've talked to patients. Um, one patient was on Velcade and said it didn't work for him, but pomalidomide, pomalidomide has been working very well. Another patient said, well, Velcade didn't work for them, but when they went on Exasimib, the oral version of a proteasome inhibitor, it seems to be working well with minimal side effects. 
I think we have to do a better job of identifying every individual patient and identifying which therapy is going to work best for them rather than simply throwing experimental approaches at them. And one way to do that is to understand the genetics of every individual person's tumor and use that genetics to better identify which therapy at which dose is going to work best for them. I asked Dr. Van Ness how we can get to personalized medicine in clinical trials if they're run to test out a particular drug or combination of drugs. It can be done without running individualized clinical trials. I'm going to take this a slightly different approach, and that is I'm going to do one-off, but I'm going to do it based on a retrospective. So the idea would be that if you could identify which patients responded to a particular drug and identify a profile, a genetic profile, that distinguished those, your next clinical trial becomes a clinical trial that stratifies people on their genetics and then decides based on your genetics you get therapy A or based on your genetics you get therapy B. In that case you don't have winners and loser groups, you have two winner groups. And so I would really like to see a point where genetic information is used to stratify which patients will benefit from one therapy versus another and test it. Thousands of patients decide to join clinical trials to gain access to the very latest in treatment options. James Bond is a 20 plus year myeloma survivor and has participated in six clinical trials. At every decision point, he's taken a very proactive step towards his care to find trials that were right for him. Yeah, so my, my first clinical trial was, was really my first transplant. My doctor, my transplant doctor came in and said, Jim, as part of the transplant, we're trying some new things. One of, its full body, one of the things is full body radiation, or TBI as they called it, with your chemotherapy. To, to we, they think they were trying to see if that would make the transplant last longer. And the question was, are you willing to enter this clinical trial? And gave me a bunch of papers to read and sign. And I said, sure, because thinking maybe it won't help me but it should help advance the science and help some other people by seeing if it's worth doing this again for someone else. So that was my first one. And then my second uh, clinical trial was my second transplant about six years later. And the same transplant doctor in Cleveland said to me, Jim, we're trying out some new things with the transplant and they can enhance some of the blood products that your body need, will need to produce when you're recovering, are you willing to sign up for a trial for that? And I said, yes. And I, again, same thinking. So I didn't think too much of it when, about my, my survival with myeloma until my first 10 years of living with myeloma were coming to an abrupt end and I was told to go to a hospice, that my, there was nothing left for me to do. And luckily, my wife Kathleen and I had heard from an out-of-town second opinion that there was a clinical trial <clears throat> for an experimental drug showing really positive results for very sick end-of-the-line myeloma patients like me. And so we, instead of going to a hospice and dying as I was advised in my hometown, we decided to try to enter this clinical trial and that was really because it was all we had, it was the only hope we had. So it was really an easy decision can, you know, it was more like, can I get in? Will somebody, will somebody let me participate? And that was extremely important to me and our family because the trial worked beautifully. It turned my life around. My cancer went into remission in a matter of weeks. Instead of dying, I became getting back to active living. And uh, I became, at that point, completely sold on the value of clinical trials. And my wife is a longtime volunteer with the American Cancer Society, and she has told me that all the important advancements in cancer treatments have come through clinical trials. And not enough of us cancer patients have signed up to participate in clinical trials. As you know, and as you said, only three to five percent of us cancer patients really enter a clinical trial. Well, I believe that entering a clinical trial, when it makes sense to your case, Certainly I would not enter a clinical trial if it was not the best thing for me to do to continue surviving. But when, when I can combine, we can combine a clinical trial with, with the treatment that's right for me, I absolutely would be an advocate for doing that. And I have advocated for myself. Why might people not join a clinical trial? 
Jim weighs in with his experience. There's reasons people fear clinical trials, and some of those are, are valid, like not being able to afford to go out of town to, if they have to leave town to get a clinical trial. There are ways to maybe overcome that, but others are really, they're not true in my experience. Things like, well, I'm afraid I'll be treated like a guinea pig. Well, I've now been in six clinical trials, and I have never been treated like a guinea pig. It's always been my interest and my family's interest, number one. It's never been we're concern, more concerned about the hospital or the drug company. That's never been a priority. It's always, in fact, what cancer patients are shocked to hear a lot of times is when they enter a clinical trial, for, for cancer clinical trials, they're either getting the, the new thing being tried or they're getting the standard of care. So it's really, to me, it's, it, it's not a risk because, well, you'd be getting the standard, standard of care if you're in that arm of the treatment, and if you're not, you're trying something new. But here's what, here's what surprised me. The very moment that the people leading the clinical trials see that the arm that's not doing well is not, you know, is, it, that's happening. One arm is not doing as well as the other. They will take patients off the arm that's not doing well and put them on the other one. So for example, if I'm in the trial of experimental something and I'm doing terribly, yet the people who are receiving the standard of care, they're, they're doing great. They will take me off, off the new one and put me on the old one. So it's not, to me, it's, I, it's the way I analyze it, it's, it's, it's great. And I think my, my level of care has been at least as good, maybe better, when I'm in a clinical trial than when I'm not in a clinical trial. So I would recommend that, that all cancer patients really give, give some hard thought to entering a clinical trial and asking, asking, okay, what you're recommending, when, ask the doctor, when you're recommending a treatment, can this, this be done in a clinical trial setting? And see what the answer is, because there are real advantages to advancing the science by getting into a clinical trial. Jim has some key points. One raises the guinea pig question. Jim Omel, a family physician and myeloma patient, interviewed Dr. Paul Richardson on patient power and asked for his perspective on this myeloma myth. Probably the biggest myth of all that patients seem to ask, and this is not a good word, but guinea pig. Everybody thinks, will I be a guinea pig if I'm in a trial? Will they use me for experimentation? Can you kind of explain how that is really a myth? The good news in myeloma today is truthfully that is far and far from what, what is reality. We're blessed with really good science that informs new drugs, new drugs that then come forward into the clinic, which are truly shots on goal. So they're not sort of shots in the dark, they're shots on goal. That's point number one. Point number two, any clinical trial we do, we believe we must put the patient first. And if we put the patient first, in other words, we build around them safety, measures of efficacy, careful monitoring, that actually ensures that they get excellent care. So you combine good drugs built on good science with excellent care and careful quality control. And I would argue actually that it's the opposite of being a guinea pig. It is actually a situation where you're in the most controlled and quality assured environment possible. And by so doing, you can improve your outcome. Jim Bond and Dr. Richardson make an important key point. They compare standard of care in one arm and standard of care plus something else or just the new treatment in the second arm. There are never instances where you are getting a test drug versus no treatment if you have actively progressing multiple myeloma. Patient Danny Parker shares his perspective. I think the, the standard of care that you're going to get being in a clinical trial is going to be as great as you would get in any conventional therapy. And you also have the prospect of having something that would be a cutting edge therapy and also a therapy that can help others in terms of learning something about what can help with this disease. So not only do we have the possibility of um, helping yourself, but also helping others and helping uh, our understanding of how to control and potentially cure multiple myeloma. Jim Bond also mentioned the fact that you may need to travel to an academic center to join. This is true. Studies are held at certain centers that can provide the oversight needed to conduct the study in a carefully monitored way. Now to that, Dr. Guido Trico says myeloma treatments may not be convenient, but there is nothing more inconvenient than dying too early because you did not receive the right care. So travel, whether it's a clinical trial or otherwise, should be considered. Sometimes patients think they can wait until they've exhausted all options and then join a clinical trial. 
This is unlikely because studies are not run on patients who have other serious issues like renal failure that come with late stage myeloma. One issue that I have personally with clinical trials is qualification. Um, usually in terms of whatever the therapy is, there's a desire that the patient be sick enough so that the drug or the therapy shows up strongly. Uh, and that's not exactly what the patient wants for what they're looking for in their treatment. So this is one issue, which is how sick do you have to be to get into the clinical trial? So and on the other hand, there is the issue, uh, if you wait too long to get into a clinical trial and you got so that you're very sick, you won't be able to qualify then either. So there's probably like an optimal window in terms of when you can get in. Uh, and this, is, this makes it difficult to qualify sometimes, I think, you know, in terms of uh, patients. One issue patients face is, is insurance coverage. Richard shares his experience trying to join a clinical trial. Yes, I've thought about joining a clinical trial. I did not have enough um, treatments yet. They wanted somebody who had gone through three treatments and I was just a new induction therapy so I, I didn't qualify for that clinical trial. So we asked the question, well if there are clinical trials outside of Kaiser, can I get into those and have Kaiser cover that for me? And they said, no, you cannot do that. You'd have to pay for it yourself or you'd have to have other kinds of insurance that would pay for it. Um, or you'd have to get out of Kaiser entirely and, and go to the, wherever that insurance would cover that particular clinical trial that you were interested in. He and his wife are looking into supplemental insurance that may cover the cost of a clinical trial and in some instances, the new drug can be provided for free. Now each trial is different in terms of time commitments, cost, and coverage. And that is a question you need to ask the trial location and your insurance company. Now, how does someone go about finding a myeloma clinical trial? In the past, you've been able to search for clinical trials on clinicaltrials.gov. Now, when I did that after I was diagnosed, I found over 450 open myeloma clinical trials. So how do you choose? And which may be the most appropriate for you personally? We've teamed up with a company called Spark Cures that makes finding a myeloma clinical trial so much easier. With a little information about you, they can narrow that search from hundreds of potential trials down to about 10 on average. The founder, Brian McMahon, is looking at this from our perspective because his mother died of myeloma and he understands the need and the challenges. At Spark Cures, we help myeloma patients find eligible clinical trials. And to, to help give an illustration of how that works, when we were working with a recent patient, what we found was when they went on to clinicaltrials.gov, they were actually presented with 156 clinical trials. And we put them through our system, we were able to get that down to 14. Now, we're able to do that because we know a lot about the patient, we know a lot about the trials, so measurable disease requirements, lab values, what the status of their myeloma is, things that clinicaltrials.gov may not take into account when they're doing the matching. The other thing was we found that some trials have actually shut down and are no longer actually accepting patients, although sometimes they're not updated on certain sites, so they're going to come back as results. And what we found is we were able to get that down from 156 down to 14. Now, what's really interesting about this, and I think the value that Spark Cures provides for patients is, we called those 14 trial sites to make sure that they were still active and accepting patients. And after eight days and a lot of calling and holding and explaining who we are and how we got their phone number, what we found was of those 14, nine had either shut down or had never opened up in the first place. So there wasn't 156 options for this patient. There wasn't 14, there was five. Right, And the problem is, how many patients have the awareness and the understanding to one, go on, sort through hundreds of clinical trials, then spend eight days picking up the phone and calling and calling and calling just to find out if they're even open and eligible to even go in and have that conversation. So we really help simplify this process for patients, help provide them with eligible clinical trial options so they can go and have that conversation with their doctor and determine if it is appropriate for them to enroll or not enroll. But what about the complexity? When I didn't know that much about myeloma, the drug names and terminology really made my head spin. One of the things we hear from patients uh, a lot is how confusing this is when you start hearing about 
proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory and relapse and relapse refractory and what these things mean. So what we've done is we've spent a lot of time working with patients to ask this in ways that we never really ask them, are you relapse or are you relapse refractory? But we'll ask them questions to learn about what their treatment process has been up to this point. From that, our system is able to tell what the myeloma status is. And myeloma status is important because virtually every clinical trial that deals with multiple myeloma has a requirement based on what a person's myeloma status is. Um, the other side too is you may not know if you've had a prior proteasome inhibitor, but as you're answering questions, we do the hard work on the back end of deciphering and matching that up to the trials based on a patient-friendly way that we've worked long and hard with, with our doctors, with our nurses, with our advisors, and especially with our patients to ask that in a way that is easy, that's understandable and that helps patients get through this really quickly. And the nice thing to remember is if you're ever unsure, you can always skip the questions and it's not going to adversely affect the end results for you. We asked Brian to walk us through a scenario using Spark Cures so you can learn more about how the system works. We're going to walk through a personalized clinical trial search and I'll share several of the questions you'll be asked. We've also created a patient-friendly overview of our questions that you can download and take to your doctor to help make sure that you have all the information that's required. When you first get to the Spark Cures homepage, you'll see an option to select your diagnosis as well as an area to enter your zip code. We'll be performing our search from Pittsburgh, PA, where Spark Cures is located. We'll hit the search button and we're on our way. The first part of the search process is all about the status of your myeloma. You may be newly diagnosed or may be relapsed. If you don't know your status, we'll help you determine it by asking you several yes and no questions. And if you are aware of your status, you can easily select it. We're going to search for relapsed clinical trials today, so I'm going to enter my status and select relapsed. At the top of this screen, you'll notice that we begin displaying your clinical trial matches. We include both nearby trials, which includes only trials within a two-hour drive, and all trials around the United States. At this point, I know that there are seven trials nearby and 156 around the country. This page allows you to sign up to be notified of new trials and treatments that match your myeloma. We keep your contact information safe and secure, and you can opt out of receiving our emails at any point. If you prefer not to provide your name and email, it's not a problem. You can select the option here and we'll continue on with your search. At the top of this screen, you'll see that our nearby and total trial results are now buttons. As you answer questions, you can view your current results and you can always come back to continue answering questions. But remember, the more questions that you're able to answer, the more accurate and better your results will be. This section is all about your treatment history, where you can answer yes and no questions about the prior treatments that you've had, including chemotherapy and transplants. You'll also notice a new button here, skip this question. If you ever come to a question that you're unable to answer, you can safely skip it. There are many trials that will require that you have had or have not had certain treatments before. Based on your answers, this helps us match you to the appropriate trials. You can see that after answering treatment questions, we've reduced the number of nearby trials by over 40%. Here, you'll be asked for information regarding your M protein and free light chains. If you're unfamiliar with this information, please don't worry. You can skip this question or you can download our patient overview sheet to take it to your next doctor's appointment. Once you've completed our questions, you'll be taken directly to your clinical trial results page. You'll be presented with all the clinical trials that are near your home zip code and you can view all clinical trials from around the U.S. by clicking the Display All Clinical Trials button. You can click on each individual trial to learn more about it and view the contact information if you'd like to directly connect with the trial team. We're working directly with sponsors of these trials to provide better contact information and patient-friendly information about each trial. Our recommendation is to familiarize yourself with your options, learn about these trials, and if you're interested, you can call the trial site directly or you can print out your results and take it to your next doctor's appointment to help determine if a specific clinical trial is right for you. At Spark Cures, the benefit that we provide for patients is empowerment, is hope. You know, we all want to see myeloma cured. The way that's going to happen is through clinical research. And without patients joining and participating and being a part of, of these clinical trials, we're not going to get to that point. So I think it's really important to raise awareness and understanding of what clinical trials are, but then helping patients understand a clinical trial may not be right for you at certain points in time, right? But our hope and our goal is that at every treatment decision point, we can help you quickly and easily find the clinical trial options that may be appropriate so that you're informed, you can go and have that conversation with your doctor. If it makes sense, we'll help 
help connect you to that trial site. And if it doesn't, that's okay. You can always follow back up whenever that time is needed. But our hope is to save you time and help empower you and give you hope that there are options out there for myeloma patients. I think one of the things that, are, that are, is really exciting about clinical trials is you are getting something often that is a really novel therapy and potentially something that could be close to a cure. Uh, I think now for myeloma patients, cure is a word that's starting to be discussed. And I think with some of the new uh, vaccine therapies, immunotherapies, CAR T cell therapies, you're looking at clinical trials that actually may be a cure. We probably won't know until the future, but that's a potential that might be available right now. We encourage you to check out the shows on My Loma Crowd Radio to learn more about research being done and to get on Spark Cures, which can help you map out treatment strategies so you have a plan for every step of your myeloma journey. This is something we as patients can do today to help accelerate our own cure for multiple myeloma. Thanks for watching.